Morning students. This is my fourth try making this video. I've been having some technical difficulties this afternoon as I make it. So hopefully this one works out and hopefully I remember to say everything and don't think that I said it on the previous video and forgot to say it now. So we're starting unit nine, which is plain geometry. I think that some of you will find this unit to be quite refreshing because it's completely different than any units we have done this year. It's working with models and shapes and angles and lines and takes a little bit of problem solving and creative thinking in order to figure things out. First thing I want to talk about is what is a plane? Well, a plane is a two-dimensional surface. So you can think of this that I have right here as a plane. It's a flat 2D surface. You could think of a sheet of paper as a plane. You could think of the top of your kitchen table as a plane. Basically think of anything that is flat. If you think about a cardboard box, that is not a plane. It has a plane on it. This area would be a plane, but the whole thing is 3D. We're just talking about one flat surface. So when we talk about plane geometry, we're just talking about geometry working on flat surfaces. I thought it'd be good for us to review the different types of angles that come about when we're working with geometry. The first one is acute angles. Acute angles are smaller than 90 degrees. You can think of acute as being cute like a baby. So smaller than 90 degrees, the smallest ones are acute angles. We can write a name of an acute angle by doing our angle sim symbol and then doing angle D, B, A. Another way to write that same angle is to write angle A, B, D. Notice that both times my inner letter is the vertex of that angle. Okay, I cannot write angle A, D, B. That would not describe the angle I'm talking about. Another way I can do is I can write angle B. Okay, so those are that's an acute angle. My other acute angle is over here angle C, B, E. Those are both less than 90 degrees. All right, now let's talk about obtuse angles. So obtuse angles are bigger than 90 degrees. So you remember 90 degrees is like the edge of your paper right here, the 90 degree angle. It's bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So my obtuse angle is right over here. I could write angle A, B, C, or angle C, B, A, or angle B again. Then we have straight angles. Straight angles we often forget about. So for example here, my straight angle is angle D, B, C. It starts here at zero degrees and you can think about it as moving all the way over to make it 180 degrees. This you should recognize because it actually looks like your protractor which I asked you to find yesterday because you're gonna be using that in this unit. Then we have congruent angles. Congruent angles are angles that are equal. So congruent just means equal. They're the same size. So in this case, our opposite angles are equal. Here I have two obtuse angles. They're opposite each other. They are equal. So congruent means equal. The next thing I want to go over with you is the midpoint. Okay. A midpoint is halfway in between two end points of a line segment. So here I have a line segment and B is the midpoint. It's halfway in between. This is helpful information. For example, if I said to you, I have line segment AC, that's how I write it, okay? Notice I do not have little arrows on the end. I'm just talking about a segment. I'm not talking about a line that goes on forever. If I said to you line segment AC equals 10 meters, and I told you that B was the midpoint, could you easily figure out what line segment AB is? If, a, if B is the midpoint, we can figure out how far AB goes because it is the midpoint, so it's half of AC. So AB would be five meters. That's why it's useful to know what the midpoint is. It's halfway between the two, the two points to make up our line segment. Then we have a perpendicular bisector. So last year, you should remember with the other Miss Nyhoff and Mr. Brower, you worked on bisecting angles um, and things like that. So a perpendicular bisector is a line, so here's my line, remember it goes on for forever because of the arrows, 
It is a line that perfectly bisects a line segment, okay? Which means it's going exactly through halfway of my line segment. So here in blue, here's my line segment, okay? And then my perpendicular bisector, that's the green, has gone through my line segment exactly at half and it's created a right angle, okay? A perpendicular bisector. So it's just a really fancy word for saying a line that cuts a line segment exactly in half. All right, a lot of your work today is going to be focused on a diagram like this. This is not the exact one in your textbook. I just wanted to point out a lot of different things that you can notice from this diagram. So for example, we could take a look and we can notice perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are lines that intersect at a perfect 90 degree angle. So I could say, uh, let's do, I could do line B, D. Notice I'm gonna put an arrow on top because I'm showing it's a line, it goes on forever, is perpendicular to line B, J. They're perpendicular, that's how they intersect each other. But I could also talk about parallel lines. So I could say line BJ, notice my arrow, is parallel to line CI. So parallel lines are two lines that are going the same direction that will never ever ever intersect. So for example, CI and HD are not parallel. They have not actually intersected, but if we were to think that our line is continuing on both of these, they will eventually intersect. So parallel lines never ever intersect. So when you're doing your assignment today, especially numbers one through seven on page 187, and you're looking at that diagram, work very carefully because you might think that you found all the answers, but there's actually more than one for all of them. Okay, so for example, if you were looking for lines containing point C on my diagram here, here's point C, there's more than one line that contains point C. So don't just write down one line. Make sure you look carefully at the diagram and find all of them. Also, when you go about marking your work on Friday, pay attention to what you have put on top of your letters. If you just put a line like this, that just shows me it's a line segment. Oops, I didn't switch. Not a line. It makes a difference. So we need to make sure we're careful and precise when we're doing our work here. Also in your questions 8 through 11 on your assignment for today, it is really helpful for you to draw out what the question is asking you. Okay, so number nine especially, it's asking you something and I would draw it out so that you can understand how those two lines are connected. Same with number 10, helpful to draw it out. Number eight, trickier than you think. Make sure you think about all the angles, okay? So work carefully, draw things neatly, and label things properly.